Hello from London. Today, we are gonna talk about TripAdvisor. This is the first thing that people think of when they're planning a trip abroad. It's the website people look at to figure out which attractions to go in a new city, but it's also the website that's gonna direct you to the biggest, most expensive, and busiest attractions wherever you're going. So today, I'm gonna have a look at TripAdvisor, see what it's telling us that we should go to here in London, and give you some great alternatives so you can avoid those if you want. So let's go do it. So first, what we're gonna do is have a look to see what attractions TripAdvisor is telling us are the top ones to go to in London. So let me bring up the app, let's type in London. Okay, so here we go. Five main attractions to visit in London. Number one, the Tower of London. Number two, British Museum. Number three, the London Eye. Number four, the National Gallery. And number five, Tower Bridge. Okay, interesting. Let's start with number one, the Tower of London. Literally just over there across the river from us right now. It's one of the royal palaces and it's a secure fortress on the north bank of the River Thames. Now, I'm not gonna knock the Tower of London. The building is very old and there is a ton of history on this plot of land. They've done an amazing job of preserving the building and you can even sponsor a stone to help keep the preservation work going. You can also read and hear so many stories about the prisoners that were kept in the tower. And of course, you can go see the crown jewels and meet the famous ravens of the tower. That being said, because this place is so popular, it does get very crowded and it's huge. So you could actually spend an entire day there and not even see everything in the tower. So if you want to avoid the crowds or don't have a ton of time to spend, then can I suggest the Jewel Tower in Westminster. This is one of only two buildings in the medieval palace of Westminster to survive a big fire back in 1834. And it was originally built to house the precious gems of King Edward III back in 1360. Five. This is London. We do old buildings really well. Inside, you can see the famous 14th century ceiling carvings, an exhibition about the history of the tower and the Palace of Westminster, and you can learn about the history of weights and measurements. Rock and roll. The ground floor is free to visit, and there's just a small fee to go to the upper floors. This is truly a rare historic gem because it is one of the few buildings to still exist from medieval times. And it's right next to Elizabeth Tower and the Houses of Parliament, so it's really easy to fit into your itinerary. Okay, number two on the list is the world famous British Museum. Now they have a very interesting and expansive collection of artifacts here. There are 80,000 that you can see on display in the museum and it's completely free to visit. However, it gets so busy in this museum and because there's so much on offer to see, if you spend an entire day here, you won't even scratch the surface. And notably, it is an uncomfortable product of Britain's colonial past as a lot of the artifacts on display were obtained in very unethical ways from other countries. This is an ongoing controversy that the museum is currently dealing with, sort of. So if you're not keen on any of that, let me suggest an alternative. The Museum of Brands and Packaging. What better way to learn about British history than through actual British things and not things stolen from other countries? What a concept. In this museum, you will go through the time tunnel, which starts in the Victorian era and goes up to modern day, where you'll see consumer products and the things that surrounded everyday people during these big moments of British history. There's also always a temporary exhibition which does a deep dive into a certain theme or time in history that's always worth checking out too. This museum is in Laverick Grove, which is very close to Notting Hill. So if you're gonna be in the area, make sure you stop by. By the way, if it's your first time visiting London, I have a free London 101 guide which has everything you need to know before you arrive. So to get that for free, click the link down in the description box of the video. And now let's go back to the top attractions on TripAdvisor. Number three on TripAdvisor is the London Eye. If you've watched our channel, you might know my views on the London Eye. Get me out of here. This is my worst nightmare. And if you wanna go do it, go do it. That's completely fine. 
Personally, I think there's some other cool places where you can get panoramic views of London without the crowds and the hefty price tag. For example, this is The Monument. Designed by Sir Christopher Wren and built in 1677, it was created to commemorate the Great Fire of London, which happened in 1666. And this is actually the tallest standalone stone column in the world, which means we've got some great views at the top. So let's go climb some stairs. There we go, Tower Bridge right there. And the Shard, walkie-talkie building where the Sky Garden is. And you can basically see anything else you want to. There are 311 steps to get up here, but as you can see, it's worth the climb if you can do it. Another great alternative to the London Eye is the Sky Garden, which is actually right up there. It is London's tallest garden, and up there there are bars, restaurants, plants you can learn about, and it's actually taller than the London Eye. What's also great is that it's completely free to visit. You just have to book tickets in advance online. Okay, fourth on the list on TripAdvisor is the National Gallery. And I can't hate on this place. It is an amazing collection of art and paintings. And best of all, most of it is completely free to see. But because of that, it gets busy. Plus, maybe you don't like this style of art. So here's an alternative. The Saatchi Gallery is one of London's amazing art galleries located in this beautiful building just off of Sloan Square Station. And it has an incredible collection of contemporary artwork. Best of all, it's completely free to visit, but because this gallery isn't in central London, it doesn't get quite as crowded as say, the National Gallery. I also recommend getting tickets to their paid exhibitions because they are usually amazing. Just check on their website to see what's on offer when you're in town and make sure you get tickets in advance because they do sell out on weekends. And finally, number five, Tower Bridge. Now, I'm gonna assume that they're talking about the exhibition and museum inside Tower Bridge. And of course, that is a bit touristy, but you do get to learn a lot about the history of the bridge and its importance to London. Also, your ticket gets you access to the engineer room, both of the towers, and the glass walkway that looks down on the road below. But if you're feeling a bit museumed out and you wanna see the bridge from a bit of a different angle, you could instead go on the Tower Bridge website and find out when the next bridge lifts are happening. The website's really great. It gives you details and times of the lift and also tells you what the name of the boat is that will be going under the bridge while it's happening. Great spots to watch the lift are here at Butler's Wharf, Pottersfield Park, or you can go on the edges of the bridge and watch up close from there. Or if you're feeling fancy, you can book yourself onto a river cruise that goes under the Tower Bridge. Some boats are tall enough that it actually gets the Tower Bridge to open up, which is a cool experience. Otherwise, the ones that go under, that's pretty cool too. If you end up visiting any of the recommendations in this video, make sure you share on Instagram and tag us so we can see. And if you want more tips for your trip to London, you can watch one of our hundreds of other videos by clicking one of the boxes popping up right around me. Wait, what am I doing? The history of the tower and the West Palace of Westminster. So much history, I'm gonna explode. So